guys, it's Wednesday and as promised, it's going to be educational video. But before I get into the topic, I just wanted to thank you all for the support and love you've been showing me for the past one month. It really means a lot and I hope you guys are going to stay with me as long as you can. And if you still haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe and give a thumbs up to the video if you like it. So without further ado, let's get right into the topic. So today we're going to learn about atmospheric layers. And I'm pretty sure that any one of you who's watching the video at least once in your life have heard about atmosphere. But if you're still thinking that you need to know a bit more about the atmosphere, then stick till the end. I'm pretty sure you'll learn something out of it. So atmosphere has five different layers. It starts at the troposphere and ends at the exosphere. So the first layer of the atmosphere is the troposphere. As you can see that the troposphere is very close to the sea level. Hence, human life exists here. 99% of the water vapor can be found here. And as the altitude increases, air pressure and temperature decreases. And because of the 99% of water vapor, most of the weather change occurs in this layer of the atmosphere. The troposphere can extend up to 10 to 16 kilometers in height. And it stops in a position that is known as tropopause. The second layer is known as stratosphere and it's very important because the ozone layer can be found in this layer. The ozone layer absorbs most of the harmful UV radiations and converts them into heat. And if the ozone layer starts disappearing more and more, there will be an increase in the global warming. The temperature in the stratosphere increases with the rise in altitude. And the stratosphere can extend up to 50 km up in the atmospheric layer. Passenger place normally travels at the lower part of the stratosphere. That is because the rising temperature in the upper layer of the stratosphere makes it more turbulent and difficult for the plane to travel. As stratosphere ends at the stratopause, mesosphere begins right above it. So most of the meteors gets burned up in this layer. The mesosphere extends up to 85 km from the sea level. The mesosphere is the sphere where the air pressure really starts to get thinner and thinner. Just like the troposphere, the temperature decreases with the increase in altitude. Temperatures can go down to about minus 90 degrees Celsius, and that makes this layer the coldest among all the other layers. Next sphere is known as thermosphere. And the layer that separates the two spheres is known as mesopause. So the thermosphere is the fourth outermost layer of the atmosphere and it extends up to 700 km from the Earth's surface. The thermosphere absorbs high amount of X-rays and UV radiations from the Sun. The temperature of the thermosphere varies a lot as the air here is very thin and temperature can rise more than a thousand degrees Celsius. And that's because oxygen molecules absorbs short wavelength solar radiation. A layer named ionosphere is found here, which covers the thermosphere and some part of the mesosphere and exosphere. In this sphere, nitrogen and oxygen molecules are ionized by solar radiation. Thermosphere ends at the thermopause, the place where the exosphere starts. Exosphere can reach about a thousand kilometer in altitude. Molecules with extremely low density are found in this layer. Those molecules which are closer to the exobase of the thermopause can travel hundreds of kilometers and never collide because of the way they are scattered. The exosphere acts as a belt so that the thermosphere doesn't expand while absorbing the UV radiation from the sun. 